growing debate tonight within the Repu within the Democratic Party, I should say, about how best to take on President Trump heading into 2020, and if President Obama is really still the answer for the Democrats. I'm hopeful that despite all the noise, despite all the lies, we're going to cut through all that. Yes, we we're going to remember who we are, who we're called to be. So the New York Times notes supporters of President Obama are now openly questioning if that rhetoric in this environment is too light, if it's too weak. Contrast that with the message from Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders on the campaign trail this week, keeping in mind they are both leading the polls for 2020 Democratic nominee. I am sick and tired of this administration. I'm sick and tired of what's going on. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I hope you are, too. The agenda of the most racist, sexist, homophobic, bigoted president in history will go nowhere because Democrats will control the House and the Senate. Joining me now is David Gelertner, a computer science professor at Yale University and the author of a Wall Street Journal op-ed entitled The Real Reason They Hate Trump. Uh, he has written several uh, editorials in the re in recent past on politics. Good to have you with us, Professor. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, let, let me Thank start. You. you know, when, when you talk about the Democrats, and, and you know, we're only about five days away from the beginning of the 2020 race, essentially, because we all know as soon as the midterms are over, that's going to be the discussion. But your piece is the real reason why they hate Trump. Who's they, and what is the real reason? Well, all sorts of people hate Trump. Uh, it's not only the it's not only the Democrats, his natural political opponents, but the uh, jihadi press, which has never taken off against a president the way they have against Trump. It reminds me of Nixon in my childhood. So they are the Democrats, but it's also so much of the mainstream press that they're really, I think, having an effect on the electorate. Um, and, and why do they hate Trump? Because Trump means what he says. He doesn't merely talk Republican conservative talk. He takes action. He's fixed the economy. He's put Obama in the shade. He's made, I think, Obama ashamed of himself. And the Democrats don't know what to say or what to do, because the economy is so much stronger now. Our foreign policy, our foreign position is so much stronger now. We're in so much sturdier position with respect to Iran and many of our other enemies, who we seem to be scared to death of under President Obama. Uh, actions speak louder than words, and Trump has taken action, continues to take action, right. and the country knows. Well, well, let me ask you about the, the premise in that New York Times piece that we talked about on the way in here, and whether or not President Obama is, is the voice for the future for the Democrat Party, given this you know, sort of level of discourse that we're at right now as a country. I, I hope for the sake of the Democratic Party that he isn't. He is a failed president. Um, he left the economy in rotten shape and our world standing lower than it had been for decades. Um, we need a vigorous two-party system in this country if our democracy is going to continue healthy. And Obama is not the sign of a healthy Democratic Party. We want somebody who is more in touch with reality. and. And, and, and not a symbolist poet, somebody who seems to have some feel for the world as it is, for the country as it is, the economy as it is. There must well, be somebody like that in well, the Democratic Party. Let's put up the list of, uh, you know, how it stands right now in the 2020 Democratic race. And, you know, granted, we're a long way away. 33% um, for Joe Biden, probably because he has huge name recognition as a former vice president of the United States. Bernie Sanders, 13%. Uh, Kamala Harris at 9 Elizabeth Warren at 8 Cory Booker at 5 um, So that's the way it looks at this moment. I expect that'll change a lot. But Joe Biden is a more sort of, you know, strong voice in the style of sort of the every American guy voice as, as Donald Trump is on the other side, isn't he? Absolutely. Biden is the only credible name on that list. And I hope for the sake of the party that they turn away from from the leftists and the radicals who make up the rest of that list. The American public is not going to vote for is not going to vote for, for, for Bernie Sanders or Bernie Sanders lookalikes or soundalikes. Not that I'm a big fan of Joe Biden, but he's a, he's a serious grown-up man. So that's something. Good to have you with us, uh, Professor Gelertner, uh, op-ed writer for The Wall Street Journal and Yale University professor. Sir, thank you very much.